Hey friends, Will here, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about balancing ambient light with flash for more creative possibilities in your photography. This has been a subject which uh, I really struggled to get my head around when I first started shooting flash, so I thought I would try and put it into a concise video to hopefully help you with your flash photography. So let's get into it. If you're already an experienced photographer, then some of what I'm talking about today may seem super basic. And if that's the case, then, you know, this video might not be for you. But if you're just starting out with flash, then I think this might be quite helpful for you because it's certainly something which I struggled with when I first started using flash. So if I sort of go back in time, first picked up a camera and one of the first things you learn is the exposure triangle. It's the combination of aperture, shutter speed and ISO and how you can change those various settings to change the photo that you get and you can sort of balance those three things and there's a world of different options that you can create but the foundation of photography is all about the exposure triangle. So then after a few years of shooting photos and initially being kind of daunted by the thought of using flash I decided that it would be cool to start using flash and sort of learning about how flash can work for me. And in the first instance, it seemed great. I started to use flash for controlled portrait shoots or product photography. And in those scenarios, nine times out of 10, I was in complete control of the lighting. In those instances, I was generally setting my camera's shutter speed to whatever the sync speed was. Now this differs depending on the manufacturer of the camera. I shoot with Sony, so in my case, the sync speed for my camera is 250th of a second, or one over 250th of a second. So that's fine. Then I was invited by a company to go and take some corporate headshots for them, and they wanted a much more ambient style of portrait. We were in a hotel and we were in a beautifully lit hotel foyer. Suddenly I was thinking, hold on a minute, if I use my flash the way I've always used it before, then none of that ambient light is getting into the final shot. So even though with my eyes, I'm looking at this beautifully well lit foyer, this nice background with some greenery and stuff. When I take the picture, I've got a well lit subject, the person, but that foyer and everything in the background was plunged into darkness. This is where the idea of the exposure diamond was first kind of flagged to me. And over the last kind of 18 months, I've been doing more and more photography using flash, but also balancing against ambient light. So the idea is the exposure diamond has got four points instead of three. You've got aperture at the top and ISO at the bottom. These two settings are important because these two settings control the overall exposure of your photograph. Changing either of those will change the way that the flash looks and the way that the ambient light looks. And then on the other side of the diamond, we've got shutter speed, just like the exposure triangle. The shutter speed is used to control the exposure of the ambient light only, so your background. And then on the other side of the diamond, we have got flash power. So flash power is the new point, if you like. It's the addition to the exposure triangle. So the flash power is used to control the exposure of your subject. So what this means is when you first want to take a photo and you know that you're going to be balancing ambient light and flash, before you turn your flash on, you want to dial in your camera so that you're happy with the exposure of the background the exposure of the ambient light. You would take your photo so that you're happy with the background. Now, obviously, in most cases, if you're doing this, then you're not going to be happy with the exposure of your subject. Your subject's probably gonna be really dark. There are a couple of caveats to how you're setting your shutter speed as well. If you want to use standard flash, then you still have to use a shutter speed that is within, so therefore below, the maximum sync speed of your camera. So again, Sony as an example, I can use any shutter speed up to one 250th of a second. There are ways of going over that, but in order to do that, you require a flash which has high speed sync, 
or you would need an ND filter on your lens so that you can reduce the light without changing the shutter speed to faster than 250th of a second, okay? But that's an edge case. So for the sake of this video, let's just assume that you can set your camera within the tolerance of your sync speed. So from very slow up to 250th of a second, if you're shooting with Sony. So we've now got this photo where we're happy with the background. And then the next thing is that you would then introduce your flash. You turn your flash on and you can then take some test shots and then this is where you would take your test shot, for example, and say you took a photo and you were unhappy with the exposure, uh, say it was too dark, the subject was too dark. At this point, you would not change the settings that we've dialed in so far, okay? You would not change ISO or uh, aperture or ISO, okay? You would only change flash power, because we're using flash power as a way to dial in the exposure on the subject. If we change the shutter speed, it will only affect the background. And if we change the flash power, it will affect the subject. This was the breakthrough moment for me when I figured this out. And um, I think the key to it is realizing that changing your shutter speed will not affect the way the flash appears on your subject. And the reason for that is that a flash is firing so incredibly quickly, it's on and off, that changing the shutter speed, it doesn't matter that the shutter is open longer because the flash is just a fraction of the time that the shutter is open. The shutter being open, yes, it can gather more ambient light because ambient light is essentially a constant light source but the flash is only on for a split second. I guess in theory, having the shutter open for longer, it could gather slightly more of that ambient light, which might change the subject ever so slightly, but generally changing that shutter speed is only gonna affect the non-flash elements, therefore, you know, the background of the scene and changing the flash power won't affect the background because it's obviously not pointing at the background. It will generally only affect the subject that the flash is pointing at. So by this way, we can use aperture to set our depth of field and get a shot that we're happy with. We can set our ISO as a combination of the shutter speed to get the background the way we want it. And then we set our shutter speed get the background exposure the way we want it, and then we introduce the flash and only use the flash power to dial in the exposure on the subject. We can use those settings in a way to control what we do. We can slightly underexpose a sky, for example, to give a much more dramatic look, or we can have a nice well-lit background and use the flash quite subtly so it's not so obvious that we're using it. I think maybe what we'll do now is like, I'm just gonna show you an actual example. I've set up a really simple scene here using a flash. And what we've got is I've, I've just put a lens on this table here with a marble block for some interest. It's not the most interesting example, but hopefully it will still demonstrate. So this is kind of standard for a, maybe a product shoot or something, right? And then up above, I have got my flash, which is just a normal speed light. And we're at one eighth power. And what I've done is I've set this scene up as I would if we weren't using ambient light. And what that means is if I turn the flash off and I take a photo, then all I get is a black screen, right? Which means I know I've got complete control over the lighting. So this, you're probably thinking this is not important because obviously we're talking about balancing ambient light with flash, but I just wanted to kind of take a step back just to kind of show where we're at with this. So in this instance, shooting with just flash, I've got my camera at 250th of a second for the shutter speed, and I've chosen an aperture of 4.5 just for the depth of the subject, and my ISO 100 because I want a nice clean image, and then I've dialed in my flash to 1 8 power, right? So, so far, this is just normal flash photography. And if I take a shot of the lens now, then I get a very moody shot of this camera lens. And you can see that the background is nearly completely dark. And that's even with the room lights on at the moment, right? So the next thing is if we're gonna introduce some ambient light. Now, if it was daylight, if it was summer, but it's like the afternoon and it's already dark, um, so I'm having to improvise a bit, 
let's kind of make some ambient light. So I am going to turn on some tube lights which I've got set up here. So we've now, in theory, got a lovely blue background for our shot of the lens. I've got two tube lights and they're both washing that gray wall there with um, strong blue saturated light. So in theory, right, with our settings, we should be able to take a photo and have a blue background, which we kind of do, but it's nowhere near the level of blue that I would expect it to be. And that is because in this instance, the flash is kind of overpowering the blue light. This is where the exposure diamond comes into play because what I can do now is if you remember what I said earlier, we've got aperture and ISO, which we know if we change either of those things, it's gonna change the entire exposure of the image. But we don't wanna change the exposure because we've got a lovely exposure on the lens, so we don't want to change the exposure on the lens. Um, we know we've got our flash power, which is one eighth, not that that's that important. If I change the flash power, obviously that's not gonna make the background change. The flash is only gonna control the exposure of our subject, the lens in this instance. So that leaves us with the shutter speed. If I slow my shutter speed, so so far we've been at 250th of a second. If I slow my shutter speed right down, let's try 130th of a second. And because we've changed the shutter speed, we're also gonna to have to turn, we're also gonna to have to turn the room lights out so that we haven't got any contamination of those lights coming in. So now we're gonna take exactly the same photo. I haven't changed the flash, I haven't changed the ISO, I haven't changed the aperture. All I've changed is the shutter speed. So I'm now gonna take the same photo again. And now what we've got is this beautiful blue bright background. And you'll notice obviously that I've changed the shutter speed, but it hasn't changed the exposure of the lens, which we'd already dialed in and we were already happy with. So this is like the beauty of this now, we've got complete control because if I still want that background to be brighter, then I can just slow the shutter some more. So let's try that. Let's go one eighth of a second now. And now we're starting to get sort of too far the other way. We're starting to get too bright of a background, but it's just an example. And if you look at that image, you can still see the exposure of the lens hasn't changed because we've dialed in that exposure. We've only changed the background. Now in that instance, I think one eighth is probably too far. So I'm gonna dial, I'm gonna go back to one thirtieth. Maybe let's try one, 60th, just to see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's nice, that's nice and rich. So, the next thing you're probably gonna say is, ah, oh, but Will, you're shooting handheld at 55 mil, and you're using a 1 30th shutter speed or a 1 50th shutter speed, you're never gonna, you know, you're gonna have motion blur in your image, you're not gonna have sharp images. But this is the other beauty of using flash and the exposure diamond, is yes, the shutter is slow, but we're not using the shutter to freeze the motion in the shot. Now obviously, there is no motion in this shot, but if you were shooting portraits and you had a model that was moving or whatever, then, we're using the, the duration of the flash, which is obviously always super fast. That's what we're using to freeze the motion and the shutter, it, it doesn't really make any difference. So in this way, we can suddenly get away with these handheld shots with incredibly slow shutter speeds and yet we're still getting really sharp images. Now, obviously there is a limit to that. If you were using very slow shutter speeds and a very fast moving subject, then you might start to see some kind of ghosting and weirdness like that. But for the sake of like a product like this or just a, a, a staged shoot with a model, then you kind of, it, you know, you can kind of push the limits of it quite a lot. And that's what you get to see. So that kind of demonstrates a little bit 
Now, just to what I mentioned before, I've kind of done this demonstration in the reverse of the way I kind of told you to do it, which is if we were starting and we knew this was our scene to begin with, then what we would obviously do is to begin with, we would dial in how we want our background to look. So we would say, oh yes, 1 60th looks a nice background. I'm happy with my aperture. I'm happy with my ISO. And then we would introduce the flash and we wouldn't change our settings. We would dial in the power of the flash, but we would end up in the same place. So I just thought I'd mention that in case that was confusing. I realize I've sort of explained it one way and then demonstrated it in the reverse, but it's the same thing. Expose for the ambient light and then adjust the flash to balance your exposure and get the result that you want. So yes, that is a quick demonstration of balancing ambient light with flash. And yes, I'm using these uh, RGB tube lights in this instance, but this would be exactly the same if you were outside and you had a sky behind you, or if you were in, you know, inside and you needed the ambient lights, say you were shooting photography at a wedding and you had lights in, um, in, a, in a venue that you needed to see, you would take your shot, balance your exposure for those ambient lights, and then add flash and control the flash power to balance your exposure. So yeah, that's that. So that is how you can use the exposure diamond to better understand your exposure when you are trying to balance flash with ambient light. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are into photography and filmmaking and my general journey as I continue to learn um, and progress as a filmmaker and photographer. Um, thanks very much for watching and um, I'll see you next time.